School. Trained by the uh, WCW star of the Maestro, Robbie Kellum. Also known as George George III at one time. Very much so. And that man's a phenomenal athlete. I had the uh, great pleasure of working with uh, the Maestro early in his career. And right now you're going to see Casey McKnight against Jeremy Vane. This match, a main event caliber match right here, opening up our program of Rampage Pro Wrestling. And again, a uh, matchup from last week we're going to see on this program that was set up last week. The BFFs are going to take on the team of Frankie Valentine and J-Rod on this program. And what a match that's going to be. It'd be sort of fun to see the uh, see J-Rod and Frankie Valentine get an opportunity to uh, go after the best friends forever. He might break their friendship or break their hearts. I don't know. Right now, Jeremy Vane uh, has had a frustrating time last couple of matches after losing the uh, heavyweight title. Been on a little bit of a losing streak, but the one thing you can say about Jeremy Vane is that he is the guy that can win a match against everybody, anybody, at any time, and he's proven it by being a two-time champion here at Rampage Pro Wrestling. But he's got an unknown factor across the ring from him in Casey McKnight, unknown to us, unknown to our fans. We're just getting to know him. We're going to learn a lot about Casey McKnight in this particular match as they lock up in the middle of the ring side headlock. I saw Jay, uh, I saw uh, Jeremy Vane in the back asking some of his friends, uh, who is this guy that I'm wrestling? Though he has no idea of what's going on here, and so it's hard to really train for a guy you don't know a lot about. Right there, though, back and forth, headlock by McKnight into the ropes, comes off shoulder block, takes him down hard. Look at the impact right there by McKnight. A lot of intensity from this young man. Good, solid, thick build here on Casey McKnight, and he certainly has a great impact already. Uh, on Jeremy Vane. Jeremy Vane moving up very slowly and uh, looking over for a conference with Charlie Cash. Charlie Cash, of course, uh, has been in the corner of uh, Jeremy Vane even when it wasn't official. Uh, they had some kind of a bond that started early on, and I know Charlie Cash likes money, and so does Jeremy Vane. Well, he also yeah, said titles lead to money, and that's the reason he's going. We also noticed Charlie Cash has been watching the matches of uh, Jake Slater and his partner, Joey Kidman, recently. Not sure what that's about yet, but we've been noticing that. Right now, what we're noticing is that uh, Jeremy Vane, a little frustrated already, as Casey McKnight is up and he had that fist ball, he was ready to throw on referee Dustin Robinson in the way. Nope, tells him to open the hand up, backs him off. Already a little bit of aggression here beyond the norm in this particular match. Well, you know, uh, Jeremy Vane does bring out the worst in people, you have to say. Uh, the antics of Jeremy Vane have often frustrated his opponents. And it could be the short fuse that we're seeing that we don't know a lot about Casey McKnight but it could be that he's pushing him beyond the point of no return. And I would want to do that with the guy, the build of Casey McKnight. Very much so, lock up right there. Both men looking for an advantage. It's McKnight grabbing him arm, taking him over right there. Vane, frustration already being expressed by this newcomer. Vane is uh, used to having control of his matches. He's had very little control so far here, Ben. And Vane uh, really not sure what to do. As you can see, his mind is thinking very quickly, and he certainly has a great arsenal of moves to do. But uh, right now, a little upset with the fact that he doesn't know where this guy's coming from. Look at trying to get his attention. I don't think that's a good idea, Jeremy Vane, slapping the man in the chest. And there's the favor of turn by Casey McKnight and not appreciative at all of the antics of Jeremy Vane. And on his bicycle, although totally down there on the mat, is Jeremy Vane backing up to the opposing corner is Vane. Casey McKnight taking his time. Not rushing in, that's a sign of a veteran. Very good, slow, methodical match here. These guys are scoping each other out. And I can't call the outcome of this match because I think it will go either way. High knee that time by Jeremy Vane. Caught him in the face that time with a punch. Solid blow, tight punch right there to the cheekbone. Can do some damage right there. Definitely caught Casey McKnight off guard as he's twice, but no, McKnight turns him right around and lights him up with a chop and an uppercut right there. Again, a chop and another uppercut reminiscent of Dory Funk Jr. at that point takes him in, throws him in, catches him with a back elbow. Tremendous aggression here, impact by Casey McKnight as he takes him up and over suplex with a bridge. And could be a pinfall right there, not enough, but I tell you what, Jeremy Vane is finding out what Casey McKnight's all about. I don't think he likes it at all. And Casey McKnight is not backing down, not one iota. The fans may not have been familiar with Casey McKnight when it started out, but they are getting familiar with him right now, as are you at home here on television, our opening match here on Rampage Pro Wrestling. And what a, uh, we've mentioned our main event, 
J-Rod and Frankie Valentine teaming up to go up against the BFFs next week in our main event. Those tag team titles will be defended when the cash ball take on the undefeated Washington Bullets. Jimmy Rave approved team will be on display next week also. We've seen a lot of dissension with them. So fans, it's going to be great this week. Next week is going to be even better. And then we're back here, as we've said, April 15th. You're going to make your plans for another great Rampage Pro Wrestling card. Memorial Mayhem coming up May 27th. So get ready for that big event. And we do wish all all of our fans that are celebrating Easter and Passover, a very happy holiday uh, season. Hope you enjoy your families and join us back here live on uh, Sunday, April 15th. Now choke in the corner by Jeremy Bain. Quick advantage. Bain always goes after the man tremendously. He may lay and wait for a while, but once he gets an advantage, Jeremy Bain is, well, for Look only so power. long as Casey McKnight again catches him in the corner. Uppercut after uppercut opens him up. Vicious chop moves Vane around the ring as he moves to the opposite side, only to be caught again. You heard that one all the way across the building, Ben Masters. This guy is throwing in some chops, and he said he watched Ric Flair. Apparently he did. And now setting him up for a snap suplex. Got him hard. Well, Ric Flair watched Wahoo McDaniel. Absolutely. Everybody learns from somebody else. And learn the hard way. Forearm twist and caught him with that forearm, blows him out of the ring completely. That forearm definitely caught him as McKnight now for the first time truly compromised this match as he's on the outside and Bain has an opportunity to get a bit of a second wind. You can see he's fanning his chest right there and you can see welts already forming on the chest of Jeremy Bain. McKnight comes in only to catch a solid blow to the top of the head. And now we're seeing what the untouchable Jeremy Bain is made of. High knee that time. The fans here know all about this guy. Whether they like him or not, he's one of the top guys here and anywhere he wrestles because Jeremy Vane is a no-nonsense kind of guy. You see he'll do anything, and I mean literally anything, to wear his man down. Uh, Vane now, you can see he's in his comfort zone. He's got control. He's behind his man. He's punishing him. And now it's his sort of Jeremy Vane's introduction to RPW for Casey McKnight. Covers him now and hooks him. Not enough, Casey McKnight not gonna give up, not gonna be someone who just lays down and dies. He's gonna be a fighter. And I think that Jeremy Bain's finding that out the hard way. And right now trying to maintain pressure, trying to control the man, getting frustrated here. Trying to just keep the man down, drops an elbow on his head. Maybe trying to break the nose on the man. And McKnight turns right into his man's blow to the stomach, another blow, tough one up. Jeremy Bain, though, catches him right as he comes off the ropes with that back elbow. That or even hurt Bain's elbow, you could tell. Now pulling him by the foot to center ring. Dropping that elbow again and covers him with that old press. Pushing down with that form, not enough. Only a two count. And right back into that rear chin lock, applying the pressure. And again, control the man. Cut the air supply off. Jeremy Bain is desperate to keep this man under his wing. You do not want to let a man like this have anything or he will take it. McKnight trying to grab a hold of a finger, try to get one little moment where he can try to get that, those hands that are glued together. Vane has total control right now of the head of Casey McKnight. If you control the head, you control the body, Ben Masters. And now nowhere to go but try to fight back here. He's at the man pulled backwards for leverage, and he is going to sleep here, being worn out by Jeremy Vane. All the life going out of the body here of uh, Casey McKnight. I know Casey McKnight does not want his debut to end this way. But it's he been a, in the ring with a veteran. tremendous contest so far, but Jeremy Vane demonstrating why he is a former television champion, former Rampage Pro Wrestling heavyweight champion. The man is, well, McKnight not out at this point. McKnight still has fire, turns into his man. Maybe was playing a little possum right there. Absolutely, and now caught him with a hard blow to the midsection. At that time, he let go, and another chop there by Casey McKnight. Now shoots him off, reversal there by Jeremy Vane. Oh, a foot right to the face and right to the chin. Covers him, hooks that leg, lateral press. That's not something I'm used to seeing from Jeremy Vane, but that was very effective. He got that foot up right into the face of Kasich McKnight as he came off, and McKnight suffering for it, gets chopped viciously, and now a blow to the top of the head sends him back into the ropes. McKnight thrown off, this time slides through, comes up with a punch or two of his own. And caught him with a right hook, took him down again with the right hook. This guy is in it to win it right here, Casey McKnight, shoots him off. Oh, this is that one. Didn't miss oh. that though. Leg Lariat catches all of it. Vane off his feet and McKnight is on top of him now. Grabs him, throws him in. Reversal. No, not a reversal. 
Now he's been underhooked. Butterfly suplex takes him over. And good point over. Lateral press. So close, only a two and three quarter count. Casey McKnight thought he had him right there. I think uh, Charlie Cash even got worried that time. Oh, that time. Vane gets him down. He's got, got his foot on the behind. Road. Referee didn't see that, but McKnight still able to kick out. Referee Dustin Robbins had out of position, wasn't able to see the foot on the ropes. Almost a win there for Vane and Charlie Cash. Set him up for the Roman BDT. Ring. He stopped him, he saw it coming, look at this. Oh. And a bridge. He's got Running it. over. KC McKnight caught him from nowhere. Took him down with a suplex, landed on his head and bridge in the winner. Hard fought match. The debut of KC McKnight on Rampage Pro Wrestling, the winner over the untouchable Jeremy Vane. Tremendous first show here for KC McKnight and what a big win against a former double champion at Rampage Pro Wrestling and what a way to start this hour of television. Ben Masters.